Hi everyone, welcome back to our video series on FTD clustering. In this video, we're going to show you the resiliency of the data links of FTD cluster. What we're going to do here is we're going to focus on our cluster master and we're going to shut down dual attached links that are part of the VPC spanned port channel, Ethernet 1.5 on switch 1 and the same link on switch 2. This will take us through the test scenarios here where data links fail on this unit. It will take itself out of the cluster. FTD2 is going to become a master. Then we'll test all our connectivity to see if how many packets we had lost. Then we're going to recover that FTD1 unit. It's going to come back into the cluster and then rejoin and we're going to again look at the connectivity itself. To test connectivity we have three hosts. Host A is on the shared um, subnet on the outside of the ASA cluster that splits into two contexts and matches our BVI1 and BVI2 which goes to host C and host B. These hosts are going to use three different protocols to get connectivity in place. One is going to be ICMP, we're going to have UDP, IPERF and also SSH connections between those. So let's take a look at our connectivity first. On the bottom here we have pings going between all the hosts, host C to A, B to A and A to B. And then we have a couple of SSH connections here that are running top and also coming through the cluster. This particular console uh, terminal here is showing us the iperf reception from host B to host A. Let's take a look at our cluster. Here's our cluster master unit on the left here. It has two units in the cluster and if I do a show connection output there I see that I have three connection shown and they are all owned on this FTD1 unit. So I see two SSH connections that are coming through BVI 1 and 2 and also I see a UDP connection IPERF that's coming through BVI 1. Our ICMP connections are not shown as actual live connections here because ICMP inspection is turned on and we have those connections torn down very quickly after um, echo reply is received. If we take a look at our FTD2 unit, it is showing to be a slave unit at this time and its connections have a Y flag that you see here for SSH and UDP uh, iperf connection. This means that this unit is backing up the other unit. So from here we can proceed on our switch 1 and switch 2 um, to bring down the data plane but before I do that I want to make sure that I show you also the same connections inside our FMC that monitors all the events of this cluster so here I made a couple of search queries for connections that uh, um, have a destination SSH port so here I can see that FTD1 and 2 are actually owning those two connections that are coming through um, either BBI1 or BBI2. Along the same lines if I look at the UDP connections I will also see that they're owned by FTD unit 1. And here I can see those coming through the BBI1. Now let's go to our switch and here on the switch side we have our port channel interfaces all up and running and here's the data plane for FTD um, units here on switch 1. I'm going to bring down interface 1.5 uh, that will in turn mark it as down interface under port channel summary. I will switch to the master console here and as I bring down 1.5 on switch 2 I will see that that unit had pulled itself out of the cluster. Our TCP connection 
had remained alive. If I look at my UDP console here, I had lost a couple of seconds worth of packets, or they were actually delayed until the next interval. So UDP had showed us uh, um, a little bit of delay, and ICMP connections are still running there. If we take a look at our FTD2, it had transitioned into a master unit. There's only one unit in the cluster. And show connection output now shows this unit to be owning that SSH and UDP connections. We'll proceed now to bring that data plane back in place. So here I can take a look. I did a no shut, but definitely this interface is not back in the port channel until the other unit comes back in to the cluster. So here I will also do no shut and we will manually bring this unit into the cluster. Um, it will try to rejoin automatically every five minutes here, but I'll just for the sake of time enable it manually and let it come back into the cluster. So that sync is going to take some time and we'll see the message when it shows up. So in the meantime I'll again review what we had done. We had brought down these two ports taking out the data plane for FTD1 unit. It took itself out of the cluster, made the other unit master. We then re-enabled them on both switches and brought the unit back into the cluster. That's what's happening currently. And if we take a look at our SSH connection and UDP connections again, we'll see that those are now owned by FTD2 units. So here, device FTD2, and it owns those SSH connections. And along the same lines, the UDP connections are owned also on FTD2 unit. So here's that UDP connection here, one of them that we have coming through BVI1. As we look back, we can see that there is replication happening. Show cluster info on FTD1 shows that this unit had also become a slave and now is a functioning unit inside the cluster itself. We check the connectivity here. We don't see any outage. Our TCP connections are still alive and ICMP connections are going as well. Finally, we'll take a look at our switch and take a look at the port channels. So here we can see that this Ethernet 1.5 had been brought into the Datalink port channel. And on the switch 2, in the same fashion, we also see that 1.5 is now part of the port channel. This concludes our demo on Datalink resiliency for FTD clustering. Thank you.